Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video I'm just going to show off a couple of my RDF builds again, because map's about to reset, and might as well. So this is something I built a really long time ago. It is an artificial intelligence machine in Redstone. What it does is it has some memory, has some basic processing, and it can use that memory to make decisions and decide what you want it to do based on some information you give it. In this particular case, I have it set up to act like a logic gate. You give it some inputs, and it decides which logical output you want based on those inputs. But that's just one example. This very same hardware could be used to do the AI for a game. You could make this be AI for tic-tac-toe or chess or something if you wanted to. Probably want a bit more memory for that, but hey. Yeah. So let's just go ahead and get started, and hope no one has broken this. So I'm just going to put in 0, 0, and I'm going to start the machine. And we're going to see what happens. And it's going to take a really long time because the clock is set incredibly slow. But hey! Oh no, we're still going. <laughs> and the reason it takes so long? Yeah, I set it really slow. I was debugging, and you can set it to be just quite a fair bit faster. I just don't want to resynchronize the whole thing. So it's laziness. So we output 1 for 0, 0. If I say you know what, this is wrong. I don't want 1 for 0, 0. It doesn't match the output I'm going for, because this thing can be wrong. You just say, hey, you know, you're wrong. Do something about it. So don't start thinking a little bit. Decide, okay, if that's wrong, what must be the other possible choice? And you can have some fancy hardware for this, but in my case, it's just saying, oh, hey, if it wasn't 1, it must be 0. <laughs> so yeah, pretty simple. And there you go. So now, if I ask it again what 1, 1 is, or Zero, zero. It's going to start thinking. It's going to say, hmm, what is elusive zero, zero? It's going to think for a substantially long period of time. And there you go. It's zero. So it's accepted, it's learned from its mistake, and it's realized that, hey, it's zero now. So how exactly does this thing work? Well, it all revolves around this basic set of memory right here. In this case, I have a perfect amount for my particular purpose, but you can have arbitrary amounts, and not necessarily enough for whatever your purpose is. The ways this thing will work, if I just trace for the logic again, I built this thing a while ago, but should be able to figure out how it works again pretty quickly. And yeah, the way it'll work is once you put in some inputs, it'll go through every single set of memory, and it'll see if it's seen that set of inputs before. If it has, it'll just tell you whatever it just said last time. Now, if you tell it it's wrong, then it'll go through, find where it encounters that input, and say, okay, something needs to change, and it'll change it. And again, in my case, that's incredibly simple, but this can be expanded for almost any purpose. So, if the our input is not there when you ask it, so if I put in 0, 0, and it's never encountered that set of inputs before, then what it will do is it will literally just say, okay, I've never encountered this before. And you can either have it take its past experiences, all of the, its memories, if you like, and decide what it thinks the best course of action is based on that. Or you can have it do what I did, and make it guess. In which case, I have it just guessing always zero. It must be a solution if it doesn't know. And from there, it'll just sort of learn from mistakenly choosing zero first every single time. But you can implement more advanced versions of this. This is just basic AI. Has sort of memory, has to scan through, has to decide what's to save where, and has to be able to find that. And yeah, so that's pretty much all there is to this machine. It's interesting. It can be applied to a lot more than just learning logic gates, although there are some people who have sort of missed the point and build these learning logic gates based on T flip flops and decoders and be like, hey Benny, you're you're a nincompoop. You built this big complicated version and did this, but and it's kind of missing the point. Still cool, but missing the point. Anyways, there you go. That's the first thing I wanted to show you. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is another thing that I built a really long time ago. It's a differentiator. It takes in a polynomial equation, and it takes its derivative. So, if you've never taken calculus before, the derivative is simply the equation of the slope of a line. So it takes in this polynomial expression, for example, 1x to the first power plus 2x to the squared plus 3x cubed, and figures out what the equation of the slope is. 
which in this case is 1x to 0, so just 1, plus 4x to the 1, so 4x, plus... It appears someone's been having some fun with my display, but that should be 9x squared. In fact, let's just go ahead and fix that right now. Because, yeah, someone just derped up my display there. It's... it's showing 9. Believe me. Yeah. And if you know anything about calculus, you probably have a pretty good idea of how I actually did this. But what's sort of interesting is the way I implemented it. The way this thing's actually been implemented is it's in a way that it doesn't require any even full adders to be fully implemented. So the whole thing, the most complex mathematical component in it is a half adder. And I thought that was kind of interesting. And it's also fairly optimized. The whole thing, if I remember correctly, I believe the whole actual computation process takes 11 ticks. It's a little bit longer than that to actually show up because the display takes some time and there's a little bit of busing delay, but yeah. So let's implement, uh, implement, let's input our own equation. So let's implement 3x squared, so 3. There you go, there's 3. And you see, it's real time updating the derivative. So that's kind of neat. Right now we're at 1, let's do 3x squared. I remember I did this a little bit weird, so yeah, it starts out at 1, and this is what you're adding to it. I did this one a little bit weird, but. Yeah, so 3x squared, again, updated, so there you go. And next term, I want just 1x, and yeah, cubed. And next term, yeah, 2x to the first. It's the only ter sort of combination I haven't used yet. So, the derivative of this equation is 6x to the first plus x squared plus 2. So yeah, if you wanted, you could do your calculus homework with this. But, I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but yeah, you could. So, there you go. If you want to see some of the hardware, the majority of this is just the decoder. The actual hardware is pretty simple. So this is the part... It's actually not even part of the hardware, is it? Yeah, as I'm trying to remember. Uh, no, this is actually just the part that's adding it to the display. This part right here is a part that's doing the actual, I guess you could say, the derivative part. It's figuring out what the... Actually, no, this part... Figure out the term, the base term, and that one's figuring out the exponent. I remember now. I'm sorry, it's been a while since I built this. But yeah. This is, and as you can see, there's a half adder right here. There's an XOR right there. Not very complicated hardware. There's some AND gates over there. That's all the hardware that goes into figuring out the, exp not the base, not the exponent. And this right here, this might look a little bit weird, but this is actually just a XOR and a carry line. So yeah, there you go. It's, that's all there is to every single part of it. There's just one of these units for every single term. Pretty straightforward. So yeah. That's all I want to do. And that's really everything I wanted to show you. So, hope you enjoyed. And hope this inspires you or does something for you. I don't know. But yeah, see you next time.